Hello friends, welcome to another episode of Blossomed in Bourbon. Uh, my name is Mark, I'm the owner here at Creative Occasion. It's a pleasure to have you here. Um, so, I thought for this episode, since we're getting close to St. Patty's Day, it might be kind of fun to do a green themed arrangement because who doesn't love a little green in their flowers, right? Um, and in the world of flowers, there are some really cool and amazing green things. So I thought that might be kind of fun. Uh, also, relative to this, we're going to be using this green vase, uh, obviously with the theme. We've got the tape grid in place that we're using for the mechanic on the design. Um, instead of using uh, chicken wire or something that we might see down inside this clear vase, I decided that the um, tape grid would probably be the best thing. So we're going to do that. Um, you know, and in planning, do you do this when you're doing a design? You kind of imagine what it's going to look like when it's finished. Um, sometimes I do that and then the finished product looks nothing like what I thought it was going to. Sort of takes on a life of its own. Um, but in this one, I kind of was envisioning kind of this crescent shape. Partly because of the use of these Bells of Ireland. And the Bells of Ireland have those beautiful kind of curves on them. So I'm kind of seeing that coming up on both sides of the arrangement. So let's just kind of jump in. I've got some other flowers over here we'll be using. And um, see what happens. Okay. Green Alstermeria, a great flower for longevity. Holds up incredibly well. Looks beautiful. Do you know the common name for Alstermeria? The common name is Peruvian Lily because the blooms do sort of resemble a lily. Have that little bell-shaped cup on them. So actually what I'm doing is kind of building up a base with the Alstromeria, which will sort of also help us, one of the mechanics. Anytime a flower has elements on it, bracts, breaks, um, however you choose to say that, it, it can be something that's used as a part of the mechanic in the design. And so that is certainly the case with this Alstromeria. All right. Um, and as you remember from how we've talked about this before, um, you establish the overall height and dimensions with your first few insertions. So this really is going to be about the width of the arrangement. And now I'm going to put the Bells of Ireland in, and that is going to establish the height. I'm also stripping off any flowers or foliage that may be below the level of the water, um, because that is important, making sure that the arrangement lasts as long as possible. Yeah, he's going to be a problem, isn't he? Let's see if I can help that with one of these emerald hydrangeas. Now, the reason that, that let's talk about that. The reason that guy's spinning around is because there's basically nothing in that little grid where the tape is that's holding him in place. So there's nothing for him to grab onto. He's just kind of spinning around. So that's why we need a little more volume in there, a little more solidifying to uh, make sure that he stays in place. There we go. All right. Bells of Ireland are a great line flower because they are long and they create that line in the arrangement. Obviously this guy's going to be difficult now. So I'm going to take him out and we'll come back to him in a second. I don't want to deal with him right now. This side's behaving very nicely. <laughs> Let me just say, oh, so, all right, let's, let's try another design idea. Let's make this an L instead of doing the crescent. Let's do an L, build the shape out a little bit longer on the other side. Ah. See, I told you, they never turn out the way you intend for them to, when you start. Mm. 
you know, these Bells of Ireland are great in Halloween arrangements too because they sometimes look kind of creepy with the way that they, the line moves, the shape. I personally like the little leaves on the ends of the stems. Some people do not, but I like that. All right. So there we go. The L is happening. Now let's build a little bit more volume into the focal area in the front. And with that, I'm going to use these white Mondial roses. These are definitely not a green rose, but it is a white rose that has a greenish cast to it. So there is definitely a little bit of green um, in the bloom itself. So they work beautifully for our theme today. There we go. So just curious, since we're working on a St. Patty's Day arrangement, what are your traditions for St. Patty's Day? Do you celebrate it? Do you not celebrate it? If you do, what are your traditions? Green beer? Something else? Guinness, maybe? One of my staff people asked me today if I was going to feature Irish whiskey. I said, you know, had I thought about that, I might have, but I'm not sure that would be being true to the bourbon element, so. All right. Now, again, trying to help create line here, I've positioned the roses so that visually it kind of helps pull your eye through the center of the arrangement. Um, I'm going to put one over here on this back side now that I can see it better. Because it may be an instance where this arrangement would be seen from all around or from, you know, two different sides. So we want to be sure that we have something that's pleasing on both sides. All right. Green spider mums or green Fujis. One thing that's really interesting, I think, about creating a monochromatic flower arrangement, and that's what this is because we're using basically one color. And when you're doing a monochromatic design, I think it's important to be able to use a lot of different textures in the flowers. That's where the visual interest is going to come from the design is the different shapes and styles and um, textures of the flowers that you're using. So this spider mom is definitely a different shape than any of the other flowers that we have in here, certainly compared to the roses or the Alstroemeria. Um, and that's what begins to give this arrangement its visual appeal. So keep that in mind. Even if you're doing an all um, monochromatic arrangement with all one color, it's not necessary to make it boring by any stretch. All right. So those stand out, even though they're very much the same color as the Bells of Ireland, they stand out because of their shape. Um, Last but not least, let's put a couple of these little buttons in there. Honestly, I'm not sure I want the buttons in there. They're really pretty, but I think I'm gonna do a couple more roses on this Alstro, and then I think we'll have it where we like it. All right, let's help extend the line <clears throat> just a little bit of these Bells of Ireland out on this side, the right as I'm looking at it. And I'll spin it around for you to take a look in just a second.
you may have heard that pop through. Sometimes with the uh, Aurelia or this Fazia, um, a sharply cut stem on the Aspidistra will just pierce right through that leaf and go right into place where I wanted it to go. All right, and then we're gonna use a couple more to kind of support the line that we created going up with the Bells of Ireland. Okay. All right. One more rose and I think we'll be done. The crescent-shaped arrangement that grew up to become an L-shaped arrangement. <laughs> it's always important to be flexible. I have a friend who was a wedding planner for years, and her license plate on her car was Improvise. Because she said every wedding, that's what she was doing, was improvising. All right. Let me let you take a look at that and see what you think. I kind of like where that landed. I think that's pretty cool. So homage to St. Patty's Day, um, but from Flower World, monochromatic, lots of different textures to keep it interesting. Uh, the L shape is kind of a classic shape, as was the crescent, which, you know, didn't happen. Um, but a classic shape in, in terms of Flower World, Nice mechanic with the tape grid. Um, something certainly very doable at home. It uses a few more stems in our bud vase episode, but, uh, but lovely nevertheless. Hope you enjoyed that. So let's go on to the bourbon tasting for today. And I gotta tell you that when I travel, um, you know, when I'm somewhere in an area that's new to me, I, you know, I'll go in the liquor store and see what I can find. Maybe a new, something I haven't tasted before and that was certainly the case this past summer at the beach. And we vacationed in North Carolina. Uh, we went across the border into South Carolina and I found this from the Six and 20 Distillery, uh, which is based in Greenville, South Carolina. This particular one is called Old Money Wheat Whiskey. Well, you know, it had me at the name, honestly. Um, I was just completely captivated by that and thought that is just so cool, I gotta try that. Um, the mash bill I found out on this is all wheat and barley. There's no corn in this, according to what I could find on their website. So that's why this is called a whiskey. It's not called bourbon. Legally, it can't be called bourbon because bourbon has to have at least 51% corn. So um, this does not fall into that category. Uh, this particular product is aged for three years. Um, and the owner of the company is a gentleman named David Rad. And in reading the backstory on this particular one, um, I read that Mr. Rad was trying to make or produce a whiskey that he thought his wife would enjoy sipping with him. Um, so it's a bit sweeter, a bit smoother than some of the other products. And this company actually distills vodka, they do gin, they have a bourbon cream, um, several different products that they do. Um, so I don't know if that means we need to call this a womanly whiskey because, you know, <laughs> I said, should I be insulted um, if I like it? Or is that a good thing? Um, but it's kind of cool that he was taking his wife into account as he was developing his products. So a little bit lighter in coloration, um, kind of a nice warm color, not as dark as some that we've seen before. It definitely does have a sweet element and as you smell it. Oh, that is really interesting. So I've never tasted this before and not what I expected at all. Um, definitely some vanilla, some kind of caramel, sweeter elements, definitely from uh, the wheat component of this. It is smooth. Jason, you're gonna like this one. Um, it's good. It does have a rather long finish. Uh, it lands more mid-tongue for me, but then it kind of 
moves to the back a little bit. I don't know. It's really kind of interesting. I don't know, honestly, how readily available this is in everybody's area, uh, wherever you're watching this from, but um, I have not seen this in liquor stores in Virginia, but, um, you know, maybe that's just more reason to go back to the beach again so I can buy some more there. Yeah. Old Money Wheat Whiskey uh, from the 6 and 20 Distillery. It's a good one. I think that you'll enjoy the pour from that. Uh, thanks for joining us. That about wraps up this episode. Please let me remind you to uh, like and subscribe to the videos. If you want to receive notifications, hit the bell icon. It is super helpful to us um, if you would like and subscribe. Um, that helps our algorithms with YouTube. So please <laughs> help us out and do that. Um, and thank you for taking the time to watch. It means a lot to me. And um, until next time, cheers to you and to flowers every day. Take care.